Yeah, yeah, you're with our dear friend Ranjan Hi, Ray. Hi, Hello, Mr. Cameraman. Hi. And we are celebrating a landmark event today. Yes. The one lakh kilometer EV user. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Almost about four years ago, I decided to uh, get into driving an electric vehicle. Happened to see an ad in the newspaper regarding uh, this car. Uh, and uh, did a bit of research. Uh, majority of the research was thanks to Kamlesh's blog on Plugin India, and uh, and it and uh, I just took the plunge. Yes. And uh, it's 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 been an amazing it's been an amazing journey. Uh, one might feel that uh, doing 100,000 kilometers is no biggie because you know many people do it, especially people who have long commutes. Uh, but I, uh, considering that this is an electric car yes. with a limited range, uh, with very few supporters and believers and lots of uh, non-believers, uh, from that perspective I think yes, it's, it's some kind of an achievement uh, to, to, to say that uh, a very very regular uh, electric car without fast charging capabilities uh, can go that much and and still it's you know it's still driving like new yeah uh, the batteries are still behaving um, almost as good, good as they would yeah, yeah yeah no, well kind of yeah between 95 and 100 now yeah uh, after all uh, you know the batteries do have to uh, degenerate to an extent hmm. um, but yeah i mean it's 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 great uh, it's uh, it's wonderful to to have achieved this and i want to keep going and let's see how far uh, this car can go Tell us about uh, a regular day at work, or so a regular regular day for me is uh, is about uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, distance driven is about say 60 to 70 kilometers uh, yeah. normally on an average, which includes uh, going to school to drop off the kids, bringing them back, going to office, coming back, maybe a meeting. But there are also quite a few days uh, during the week where. Uh, I do have to, you know, drive a lot more, and on on those days the car does sometimes 100 plus kilometers, sometimes even 150 uh, sometimes. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what my normal commute is like. So you would be charging in between? Yes. Um, so uh, there's a charging station at charge point at home. There are a couple of charge points at the office. Uh, but then you know, I mean, we've. Over over the time that we've set we've set up the uh, the uh, the electric vehicle community across EV users uh, in India, we've got together. We designed the recharge app, which then uh, uh, you know encouraged people to set up uh, community charge points. Um, and uh, because of people setting up community charge points, it's a lot more easier now to find a charging station. Uh, there are, I think, about 50, 55 of them in 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 in, in Delhi, hmm. um, and finding a charging station has never really been an issue for me. In fact, in 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 almost four years of ownership of this car, uh, I have never ever run out of charge. Um, so, you know, there's a commonly used phrase when it comes to electric vehicles called range anxiety, yes. where uh, where you are anxious whether you will have enough charge in the battery to reach your destination or not or whether you can come back hmm. uh, honestly I've I don't think I've ever had an issue of range anxiety hmm. uh, because all it needs is a little little bit of uh, you know planning your commute uh, yes. organizing your routine and uh, it's it's actually quite possible I mean I've not had an issue in four years so I think uh, it shouldn't be an issue for for, for people and having said that uh, as we go further, we will have cars with more range, we will have quick charging facility uh, in the vehicles, more charging points being set up across cities, across highways. So I think range anxiety will never be a problem uh, in the days to come.
So, have you ever used the revive feature that the car comes with? Yes, once. Uh, and you got the 10 kilometers it promises? Uh, it it promises between 7 to 10. It actually depends on uh, on how efficiently you've driven. Yeah. So, if you've literally squeezed, uh, you know, every uh, every little bit of charge out of the battery, then the revive will give you less. Yes. So, I was once on my way back home hmm. and uh, I didn't want uh, to take the chance of running out of charge. Yeah. So, I used the revive feature and I reached home with about, I think it was 1 or 2 percent left on the battery. Uh, How does I, the car behave when it is well, that low on charge? When it uh, reaches about 20 percent on charge, Hmm. and goes below 20 percent it switches hmm. off uh, your boost mode which is the fast acceleration mode hmm. when it goes below 10 it goes into something known as the limp mode where i think uh, that it draws less power of the battery right. so even in the in the limp mode which is basically 10 percent of the battery left uh, because you can't accelerate at hmm. the same uh, you know at the same rate and it's drawing less power i think you can easily get about 13 to 14 kilometers hmm. which uh, should take you to the nearest charge point and uh, you know you can recharge your batteries there the one lakh kilometer that you have driven have you had any maintenance issues and what was the support like from the company uh, quite a few maintenance issues i mean you have to realize that uh, this is the first batch of uh, electric cars or there would be quite a few issues and i faced hmm. um, faced i think almost all of the issues that possibly could be in the car so in, in in you know in the three years and ten months of of having owned uh, this particular vehicle, um, I think about six to seven months this car has spent in the service center, you know, collectively, cumulative. Um, and yes, when the car when you don't have the car, you don't obviously get the benefits of driving it. Uh, so it is uh, it it is obviously problematic. Um, Any battery issues that you have faced that? Uh, yes, I mean, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, just October last year, I was coming back home and uh, um, white smoke started emanating from, from below the seat that you're sitting on. Uh, this mm -hmm. car has 16 batteries and there was this uh, s uh, sweet and sick sweet smell uh, which started coming out of the smoke. Okay. Um, and the car lost all power. So, none of the controls worked. Everything just, you know, all, everything just went. Uh, Must have been scary. Yes, but uh, but because of our community, you know, somebody had mentioned this happening to them earlier. Okay. So it automatically clicked that one of the batteries must have failed. I mean, uh, Delhi is not really the best place to have uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, lithium-ion batteries because of the range of climate that it uh, Very faces. Extreme Very climate. extreme climate. Yeah. So going down to almost two to three degrees in winter, almost touching fifteen summer. Apparently, not good for a certain kind of lithium-ion batteries. Hmm. Um, so, ha so obviously, this car has faced all of that uh, and road conditions. So, what did you do when the smoke started emitting out of the batteries? Yeah. So, obviously, for a second, uh, you know, it's a bit scary. But then, when I realized that probably one of the batteries have failed, and obviously, there's not going to be no power coming to the car. So, thankfully, there was enough momentum or for me to steer the car to the side of the road, and then called up service center and they had it towed. Hmm. Um, took them about a month to give me back the car after having changed the battery uh, and so that is that is that is one issue with regard to electric cars currently in india the people who service these vehicles uh, do not have that much of experience so every time that there is a problem with the car and if it's a new problem and it hasn't happened to any other car across the country it takes that much more more time to first identify it and then figure out a solution not every time the solution is uh, is is you know brings the car back to its original se self mm -hmm. so i do believe that there is a certain amount of hit and trial happening also with regard to uh, you know making things all right with whatever part goes wrong and because the volumes are very low so um, so for the part to be available mm -hmm. here in delhi from the manufacturing unit wherever it is in bangalore or down south it takes time uh, but i believe that you know, as more electric vehicles hit the market and more people uh, start buy and use electric vehicles, these issues will slowly and steadily be a thing of the past. Uh, yeah. So, Ranjan, having driven a lakh kilometers, what would your uh, 
words be to the users for the ado- uh, adopters for people who want to go electric but are skeptical or don't know how the industry will grow what would you say to them um i think a lot has changed since i started driving electric uh, with with our government now uh, all geared up towards uh, embracing electric mobility by 2030 this times auto expo is also uh, uh, you know proof that almost every manufacturer is going the electric route so i think people will have a will have a lot more more um, lot many options to choose from mm-hmm. we have not had many you know we've had just mahindra um, um so if people are skeptical i think uh, there is something to learn from all our experiences uh, i mean i think we we've, we've had this running joke with regard to this car doing a lack and the odometer not having not having six digits <laughs> saying and we you know we've joked about it so many times saying that he, probably even the even the company never believed that a car that the car could reach a lack right. of kilometers so right. so the odo got stuck at uh, 99999 and then it, they had to reset it back to zero mm-hmm. uh, uh, so i think the there will be a there will be a massive shift from uh, from the side of non believers who are a lot many nowadays mm-hmm. Uh, to believers and i think it's going to happen ex- exponentially now hmm. uh it's happened at a very slow rate till now but there is there's another player in the market now and then there'll be more uh and people will slowly and steadily be uh, be embracing hmm. electric mobility in all forms not just in cars but you know two wheelers and cycles um and uh, they will start understanding that uh, that what we believed in for all these years four five you know some of us have been driving electric cars for 10 12 years now the the original reva owners i think all the things that we believed in uh, will will come true and somewhere down the line we'll have an opportunity to say see i told you so what do you expect of the manufacturers and what kind of products would you like them to come out with uh, i think in terms of what kind of products i'd like eventually uh, the the current fleet of uh, ic engine cars petrol diesel cng yeah. will get phased out and replaced by uh, by electric cars and other other forms of uh, sustainable transport i mean i really don't have a say in what kind of cars would come out i think mm-hmm. the present fleet would get uh, would get exchanged with with a new fleet of of vehicles but in terms of uh, in in terms of uh, what i would expect from uh, you know the manufacturers yes i think uh, we've we've been trying to get uh, to talk to mahindra yes uh with regard to how this pro- how this particular product could be made better okay now because there are so many more people like me who who day in and day out drive an electric we understand some of the very minute issues also that happen with with this particular model hmm. and uh, but we don't know how how to make it better because yeah. we are not we are not making the car yeah uh, but i'm not sure whether, whether so you're saying that the company should take feedback from yes, users and you should absolutely take yeah. feedback from from users i mean um, that's that's like uh, that's that's like marketing and sales 101 isn't it you br- bring a new product into the market you give it to a few users you bring a new drug into the market it's tested among yes. a few few people yes. to get feedback uh, so i'm not sure whether this product was tested with uh, comprehensively with users or not but now that you have users who've done a lakh who've, who've done 90000 who've done it you know the, so many yes. of us have done more than 50000 yes. kilometers yes. so we 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 believe that we we know that there are these many issues and they're, they're not many yes. they're like if you made a list there'll be probably like about possibly even 10 and 20 i think okay uh, many of which have been resolved by the company but many of the which possibly cannot be resolved because either the design was faulty uh, or the fabrication of that particular part of the car was not was not proper but there's a lo- there's the certain amount of learning in that and that can be rectified in the next model that they take take out hmm. uh, i mean i think plug in india has done videos and asked for you know feedback from a lot of the E2O plus owners yes. and it seems that many of the inherent problems of the E2O have actually uh, are also the same in the E2O plus um so 
my question is what is it that mahindra has actually learned from the e2o uh, and rectified in the e2o plus uh, the answer possibly is that they have not really looked at a lot of the inherent problems uh, which i don't know but maybe some of them could have been uh, could have been made better and the mm -hmm. e2o plus uh, should actually be selling much more than what the e2o did right. in my opinion right. uh, but it possibly hasn't yet so i think you know uh, get our feedback we would love to be part of uh, a process where a selected few can can directly speak with say the designers the technical team the telematics team and give whatever feedback we can give i mean after all we are believers in electric technology we don't have an ulterior motive we just want to help uh, it's mahindra today it could be tata tomorrow it could be you know some other manufacturer tomorrow and if we can give feedback to make your product better then i don't think you sh have a reason to not talk to us that's it are you thinking of upgrading and which actually would be no. your no. next electric car actually actually uh, i i have not thought of upgrading because uh, i have two e2s now uh, one is you know this the one bluey, the, the bluey, bluey which is dash. which is done which is done yeah my daughter calls it bluey so it's called bluey everybody knows that bluey yes it's done a lack and i would like to see how much more it can do so that another that lack on the yeah possibly oh. another another you know 99999 in the next 2 to 3 years let's see how much more this car can do that would be great yes and the other car which i uh, which i picked up from a dear friend who upgraded herself to the e2o plus is the first electric car ever made wow so that's that's like uh, and that's that yeah so both of these car at some level i feel are are are, are epic pieces Definitely. and i wouldn't want to let go of both and i would like to enjoy them uh, as far as as much as i can uh, so unless there is something that really excites me which currently there isn't in the market uh, but maybe in 2 to 3 years but not right now i haven't thought of another one right now wonderful